started to believe, especially my romantic-minded nephews. I haven't cared whether they recognized me or not. But you, don't you know me? Where were you born? In Peterhof, child, no doubt, of Nicholas II and Alexander his empress, and grandchild of Maria Fedorovna. You have taken a long time in coming to comfort my bereavement. I wrote you letters, but you never answered. Perhaps you never got them. I have received quite a few appeals from resurrected Romanov. It seems the Bolshevik firing squad were very poor shots. <coughs> Twice I started to try and find you. Only there were many days when I did not know who I was. But now you do. You at least have accepted yourself. How long have you been an actor? As in your own case, Your Majesty, from the earliest childhood. Yes, to be a princess is to be an actor not necessarily a good one. Perhaps I should have learned to be a better one if the curtain hadn't fallen so early. You are being flippant about a subject which you must realize is for me a great personal sorrow. Forgive me. I forgot for a moment that you would be regarding that tragedy as more yours than mine. I am trying to keep my courage, but you are making it very hard for me I've been without love for so long. Oh, come, come. Have there been no men in your life? I thought the story of your rescue included a Bolshevik guard who had fallen in love with you and who carried you from the shed where the bodies were awaiting burial. Yes, he rescued me and took me to Romania. But he soon decided that a crazy girl was no great prize. A rescue from the very edge of the grave. Years of lost memory in an asylum. Excellent material for melodrama. Long, empty days in which the consciousness of living came only through pain. That's hardly melodrama, Romana. Did I give you permission to call me that name? I'm sorry. It slipped out. I will try to guard my tongue. You would think my answer should be to grant you that privilege? A lonely old woman should be glad to hear someone call her grandmama. My loneliness has been as bitter as yours. You ask me for recognition, for love, and you do it well. Your eyes are moist, your voice full of feeling. But I can only reply that the love you beg for, for belongs to one who is dead. You have chosen to deck yourself in the robes of a spectre, mademoiselle, and in so doing, have managed to win endorsement from a few poor sentimentalists, dreamers, self-deceivers. But I am none of these things. The shell that was once my heart is not easily pierced. And so you thrust me from you. I was told you would ask me difficult questions, but you're not interested enough to ask me any. Oh, I was going to catechize you, was I? That is what your business associates Told you? They mean nothing to me, those men, nor the minions about which they dream. But they told you about those minions. Oh, yes. They have told me. <clears throat> and did you not say that Romanov may be butchered but is not to be bought? That should have been your answer. For if your blood was truly Romanov, you would not let yourself be made a cat's paw by believing it is true. Tell me to whom this money should be given and I will give it. Then perhaps you will believe me. Easily said. You cannot give the money away until you have it. And you cannot get it without first obtaining my recognition. Yes, you are hard. You are showing me your fighting face, the wounding words barbed like arrows. I remember hearing father say you were the toughest fighter the family has known since Peter the Great. That was at the time you and my mother quarreled over a necklace from emeralds, part of the imperial treasure, but you wanted to keep them for your lifetime. Who told you this? Oh, but there were plenty who must have known about it. Rasputin as a beginning. Alex aired all her grievances to him. You wore them with your last court dress, the red velvet one with the long train. Where did you see my portrait? Or did someone describe me? It's strange. I only remember the 
the largest outlines or the little details. It was the worst of all the world. The width of the palace, my private room, the snow falling outside the double window pane. Alex had herself formally announced by one of the lackeys. Her imperial majesty, thought she, was going to awe me with a title that had been my own for many years. I, I, I was sitting by the fire with my jewel box on my knee. And after that pompous nonsense, I didn't even trouble to get up. I, I don't know why I'm telling all this to you. My father took the side of my mother. They even brought in the chancellor. <laughs> they were all lined up against you, but you kept digging stools. How did you learn to call the great Kathy? We, did. we always called her that. And sometimes we'd give the same nickname to Marie because she had such an eye for the men. Olga used to tease her and stop. I forbid it. I forbid you to bandy those names. They are my sisters. I can speak of them if I choose. Imposter. You call me that? Yes, and I want to stop. If you have any decency, I demand that you end this masquerade. I will pay you, give you more than these blackguards will. Go away, leave me. I'm offering you money. Go away, please. You're giving up, are you? So it wasn't enough to have suffered all that. The cellar, the asylum, the cruelty. It was also necessary that I should meet you again, like this. Excellent, excellent. The tragic scene of despair. You're forgetting nothing, are you? How could anyone who has suffered so much have so little heart for suffering? I am sorry, mademoiselle. It's your failure to win me over such a cruel disappointment. So goodbye. Don't go. But you just told me to. Not yet. I'll say nothing more, nothing to try and convince you. Then what do you want of me? Just a moment or two longer. Let me touch your dress. I'll put my hand for a moment in yours. No, just a moment more. To hear your voice, to close my eyes and fancy we are on the terrace of Livadia, with the smell of the sea and an echo of laughter from the tennis court where father and Olga are playing. You called me little one, Malenkaya. It was your own special name for me. You used it for me and, and no one else. <laughs> are you ill? No, no, it's nothing serious. But you have seen a doctor, a good one? Yes, it is kind of you to ask. And I'm not, after all, surprised that you do not recognize me. I know I have changed very much indeed. Let me go, please. I must go. What is strange, what is really strange, is that you have altered so little. You still seem to me as you did that day, that my finger was pinched in your carriage door, and you told me to try not to cry because there were people there and I was the daughter of the Tsar. Let me go. Look, it is still not quite straight, that finger. Or can't you see the difference from the other? You are too clever for me. I don't know how you know these things, but please, mademoiselle, I'm an old woman. I have not the strength. Very well. Go if you must. We have met once again, the only two left of our family. I shall come back. I will see you once again, Mademoiselle, when my mind is clear. No. Perhaps you had better not come again. You are kind now. You have softened toward me. But later you will get your balance. You will say, it was all acting. She is some sort of cheap little actress hired for money. And it's true, Grandmama. They did hire me for money. I was starving after I ran away from the asylum. I had nowhere to go. I even went down the steps of the canal. Perhaps I should not let him stop me. Goodbye, mademoiselle. Goodbye, dear, dear grandmama. I will try not to be lonely or frightened. Frightened? Why did I say that? Where have I said that?
those words before. Oh yes, I remember. It was on board the Standard. I had waked and found the storm raging, the big waves breaking against the hull. I cried out, go, Mama. And, and you came to my cabin. Mama Kaya, Mama Kaya, Mama Kaya. I couldn't believe it at first. You've come from so far away, and I waited and waited and waited. Don't cry. Don't say anything. You were born. You are alive. That is enough. I can stand no more for now. Can't you hear how that very old heart of mine is beating? I must go, but don't be afraid. I shall come back. I need you. Let go of my dress. <laughs> that is what you used to do as a child. <laughs> be sensible, Mommy Kyle. I'll go as I used to. Speaking to you as I left beside your little bed. We will go tomorrow, if you like, to my old palace in Finland. It is still there and still mine. There is a very old man there, our little soldier. Each evening he goes from one room to another, lighting the empty lamps, until for him the great dark rooms are ablaze with light. The other servants take no notice. They realize that he is childish. And perhaps that is true with all. We are lighting dead lamps to illumine a 